Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on the video. This is a video just to show you guys what I've been working on today. Some of you follow these sorts of things and find them interesting. I installed Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop on it. This is Ubuntu 16.04.1 and I am very very happy to inform you that they have fixed the network manager bug. There was no problems with network manager on this particular machine when I tried to install any Ubuntu 16.04 based distribution. I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to work no matter how, how hard I tried and they seem to have fixed that problem so I'm very happy about that. I decided a while back actually that I wanted to first of all I wanted to use the GNOME desktop and second of all I needed to put something on this machine that I could get to work with all of the hardware that I have hooked up to it it is an HP laptop that I have repurposed as a desktop so therefore it runs all the time with the lid closed and I don't want to have to open that lid because one of the hinges is broken and opening and closing it is not something I like to do and if I can just run it and then allow it to suspend when I'm done come back and wake it up I have no problems I don't have to touch it it works great the only distribution that worked when I first repurposed this machine was Linux Mint 17.3 I couldn't get anything else to work so I have been running this on Linux Mint 17.3 quite happily but I kinda wanted to move ahead a little bit and I wanted a little bit of a different experience so that's why I'm using the GNOME desktop and yes, I know some people call it GNOME. I was watching videos from the GNOME project earlier this evening, and they switch back and forth. Some of them call it GNOME, some of them call it GNOME. So whatever you call it, it's fine with me. It's cool software. We don't need to argue that point. Thank you. Okay, so the way I did this install on this machine was I did a network install using the Ubuntu 1604 network installer and I've shown that in past videos and it's really cool because <laughs> I was able to do that through Wi-Fi I did not have to hook this machine up to a wireless network it actually recognized that Wi-Fi was there and allowed me to choose a network and put my pass key in and, and do the install it's a command line driven installation program and it allows you to install Ubuntu and basically pick the components that you want as you roll along so that's exactly what I did and for those of you who are not terribly familiar with the GNOME desktop experience uh, let me take a minute here just to run through this for those of you guys who haven't seen it I know many of you have but over here we have this little uh, menu up here with indicators it's all one thing it's not individual indicators you click on that and it opens this here's all your volume controls right here this is uh, for your Wi-Fi network right there. This is your uh, battery. Shows you whether it's fully charged and all that other kind of stuff. And also gets you to power settings. And then here's where you can log out and get to your account settings right there. And then down here, this row of buttons. This one will open up the settings menu. This button took me a little while to figure out because I had never seen it before this laptop obviously has an accelerometer in it and what this does is it locks a portable device like a tablet or a netbook or something like that where the screen can be rotated and it will change the orientation of the screen that allows you to lock it now it's not going to happen on this particular laptop but that's what that button does it allows you to lock it so that the screen won't change i would never seen that before it took me a little while to figure that out and I'm assuming that the accelerometer in the laptop is there to protect the hard drive so if it moves it parks the hard drive so it won't get messed up then here's where you can lock your screen and here is where if you click you can shut down or restart and also on that little thing right there no I don't want to quit <laughs> I'm not uh, shutting anything down. I see what the deal is. Uh, if you quit now, no, I don't want to quit. That's just, okay. All right. That's from the simple screen recorder going, what, you're going to stop? I'm capturing video. But anyway, what I found out here was is that if you hold down alternate and hover over that button right there, now you can suspend the system. See how that turned into a little pause? And let me see here. Make that a little easier to see. 
I've got zoom. So I kicked in the zoom. If I come over here and hover over that, now I'm going to hit alternate. Look at that. That's pretty cool, ain't it? So, yeah. Now, I did increase the size of the text a little bit like I ordinarily do, and it always has that accessibility menu up there. So that's that's a pretty quick look at what the desktop is all about. If you hover over activities or click on it, you'll get this menu over here. Here's um, the applications that are installed on the computer. You can also get a list of the recent applications. And then you can also uh, come up here and search for anything on the system. So if I want to search for a program, then all I got to do is search for terminal. Okay. And you'll see that shows up. Also, documents or anything that uh, is close to it will show up too. So that's very cool functionality right there. And I did want to open up a terminal because I wanted to show you uh, what I had to do to get this to work. First of all, I, one of the things that Ubuntu does is that when it's sitting at the login screen, the greeter, oops, when it's sitting at the login screen, or also known as the greeter, and you are running it on a laptop, uh, then if you close the lid, it's going to suspend the computer. That's pretty cool. That means you can log out, and if you have multiple users, you can just close the lid, suspends the system. That's perfectly all right. Well, I needed to get rid of that because if I'm running this machine with the lid closed all the time, then I don't want it to do that because the moment that it boots up it will automatically suspend itself. So a little bit of research turned up the fact that I could work on this file called logind.conf and there was a bunch of settings in here and this is just for the greeter in Ubuntu. And so you can you can change a lot of the parameters here but what I had to do was add this last line right here that tells it what to do when the lid is closed, which is to essentially ignore, which is what I wanted it to do. Okay, so that was one thing I had to do. We'll come back to the terminal in a second. And if I come here, I want to get the tweak tool. Now this tool is really cool because it allows you to do things with the GNOME desktop like get yourself some icons, uh, also, I was able to choose my theme here. I'm using Numix. I'm using the GNOME icons. So that's pretty cool. A bunch of extensions available. These are just standard extensions. I don't have any of these turned on, but you can get a lot more. And let's see here. I mean, this is the fonts. Here's where you can change those. And in the power settings here, this is where you can tell it what to do, you know, when the lids closed and things like that so I told it I wanted it to suspend even if there was a monitor hooked up and when the lid gets closed do absolutely nothing and so I was able to set that for the desktop as well so that way basically it doesn't matter you know so that's cool so now I don't have to worry about any of that stuff and the login screen renders the way it's supposed to so when the machine boots up it's not stretched out or screwed up which is what was happening with like Linux Mint 18 and anything else based on Ubuntu 1604 other than GNOME so here you go and I mean it's not all peaches and cream it is the GNOME desktop and I have used it before so if we look at HTOP you'll see that we have a little bit of overhead here this thing's using 1.3 gigabytes of memory uh, and it's swapping a little bit but I have had a bunch of programs open here and I'm capturing video. Um, but it's very fast and responsive. I think one of the reasons that it's using the memory is, is it loads a lot of the desktop functions up in memory and just boom, they're there when you click on it. So uh, it seems to be, it's actually running faster than Linux Mint 17.3 did as far as applications are concerned. So uh, this is kind of interesting. I haven't used. Uh, the GNOME desktop on a regular basis and sometimes so I'm going to figure this out as as I roll along here and see how all of this shakes out everything seems to work quite well yeah I'm gonna go ahead and close the terminal so everything does seem to be working quite well and uh, we're gonna see how this goes it took me because of the way I installed this this took a long time I didn't really do it in one go 
I kind of poked at it all afternoon. I got it going over here in the corner and just kept uh, checking on it and doing a little bit more to it. That's usually the way that I do these things. But I do like the look of it, and especially with New Mix and the dark theme here. So this is what the files looks like, which is Nautilus. And I did, you know, it's an active desktop, so you can do things with it. You can bring up the background application here. Well, what did that do? Change desktop background. That was kind of interesting. I'm supposed to bring up the settings. Did it do it somewhere else? Oh, there it is. It just appeared on a different desktop. Oh, that's right, because I already had the settings open. I was showing you guys something. Yep, that's what the deal was. So here's the, the regular settings. These are the basic settings for the system. And then you have the uh, GNOME Tweak, which gives you a little bit more. One of the things I liked about this was is that it figured out what I was doing with the displays without me having to, to tell it. It, it knew, okay, this lid is closed, we're going to ignore this display. It turned it off, and I never even had to mess with that. And then, you know, they've, they've changed some things around. If you're, you're used to um, the older desktop, like here's the power settings. Uh, they kind of, there's no screen saver in here. Okay, so it will just, you can blank the monitor in 15 minutes. That's the shortest amount of longest amount of time that you can have it before the monitor will blank and then you can also set it to suspend I did read that some folks were having problems with the system auto suspending I didn't seem to have much of an issue the first time around I tried it it didn't seem to work and then I essentially reset it again and booted it and it worked so I'm happy with that so there you go gang it is Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop. I think I pretty much showed you everything I wanted to show you. That's one of the things I like about it is, is that it doesn't have a lot of hidden stuff and it's all right here and it's easy to get to and uh, I have not used GNOME in a long time so I want to see how I get along with this workflow. We'll see how this rolls and with the simple fact that it took an entire day to do this and I had to <laughs> change all these settings I might actually keep this distribution around for a while oh there's one more thing I wanted to show you I thought this was cool okay so you know how when you open up Google Chrome that it doesn't have a menu bar well that's kind of annoying because in GNOME see you've got this bar up here all the time that's one thing I don't like about it I'm um, you can't really auto hide it or do a whole lot with it and even if you could I don't think I'd want to because I'd be afraid of screwing up the system well check this out I was able to find an add-on for Firefox that got rid of that bar and it's taken a little while to open I haven't opened it and look at that so this is what Firefox looks like I was actually able to find an add-on that made that go away somebody told me about that a long time ago and I was playing around with this because with the with the bar up there it's like you have this bar and then you have the title bar which does nothing and you have the tabs and then I've got the navigation bar and then of course I've got my bookmarks bar and so by the time you get to the actual web page you're already like a third of the way down the screen so I wanted to get rid of that so that was kinda of cool that I was able to pull that off and everything else works the way it should so pretty cool so far and you know what was really weird when I first installed VLC media player I'm gonna show you this too when I first installed media VLC media player man it wasn't rendering right it didn't look right at all and then I found that you could go in here and set this to GTK and it follows the theme and everything so that's cool it's something that I was playing with a, a while back and I noticed I was like boy that doesn't quite you know look right but then uh, I was able to go in here and set it for GTK and it works just fine so that's something cool and for whatever reason they have uh, changed the way that the um, Oracle VirtualBox displays so you'll notice here that it's actually quite tiny 
It doesn't follow the, the desktop theme at all. I don't know what they did with that. It's kind of weird. Because I have all the fonts scaled up everywhere else, but it's not, it's not following the theme here. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll send down an update because they do have a couple of bugs in here. But I went with 5.1 anyway. I did not want to regress and go back to an earlier version. I figured I'd stick with this one and let them do the updates. So there you go. Thank you for watching. I certainly do appreciate it. And I realize I'm just rambling on about Ubuntu and Ubuntu GNOME. But I figured this would be a fun change of pace and you guys would like to see it. Thanks for watching. Do check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, give it a like. And check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of cool things about Linux. Talk to you again soon.